The Rebel Capitalist Show. The way I look at this, Eric, is we've got three systems. The way it worked in the past were the commercial banks were responsible for creating the majority of the dollars out there in the real economy when they would lend money into existence. Um, now, I, the way I see it, we've got this hybrid system where the, the banks are creating dollars by lending, but the government, like we talked about before, is creating new additional dollars by spending them and having the Fed monetize it because they're not pulling the dollars out of the system in the first place through taxation or selling those bonds to the individuals or entities in the real economy, basically going straight to the Fed where they're buying them with bank reserves. That's kind of this hybrid system. So the amount of dollars is now dependent upon the commercial banks, but also the politicians. Mm -hmm. And that's where we get into the AOC and everything that we talked about before. But in the future, I think we may go into a third system where we have a central bank digital currency, where the central bank themselves will have much more of an, let's say, influence on the amount of dollars that are being created in the real economy. And maybe this goes back to what Dr. Lacey Hunt says when he says well, how I'd go from a deflationist to an inflationist. I think he's talked to Grant Williams about this. He mm -hmm. says bank reserves would have to become legal tender. Uh, yeah. and, and the way I see that is the Fed being able to issue loans into the real economy, creating the dollars they need, and then being able to spend money directly into the economy through mm -hmm. UBI and then have some sort of timer on that to increase velocity. I, I think that that next system is how they could create the inflation that would overwhelm the fire that may bring about hyperinflation. But what do you think about that? Because I know you're an expert when it comes to uh, this, you know, technology and, and the crypto space and the central bank digital currency. There's a lot to unpack in there. So let's go through a, a bunch of things, but we're, we're very much in agreement. So first of all, the one of the things that you'll hear or read a lot on the internet is you know what look out hyperinflation is coming it, it it's coming to you soon it's happened elsewhere it's coming to the united states for the most part that's nonsense but it's not totally nonsense so let, let's really take this apart um the place there i think a lot of people are confused is first they don't understand what that word hyperinflation actually means They'll say, we're going to have hyperinflation. It's going to be as bad as the hyperinflation in the 1970s. Well, wait a minute. The 1970s was nowhere remotely close to hyperinflation. And the right. economic drivers of that inflation had nothing to do with the economic drivers that would cause a hyperinflation. So the textbook definition, there's a number of different definitions. The most common one is hyperinflation uh, is said to exist when there is a 55, 0 percent monthly, not annual but monthly rate of increase in the cost of goods and services in an economy right. that means that on an annualized basis inflation is running more than a thousand percent a year and what's really happening though is it's not the same monetary phenomenon normally inflation happens when there's a certain amount there's too much money chasing a limited amount of goods and services and so the price of both labor and goods and services goes up. That's inflation. And there's a, a self-reinforcing cycle that drives that. Hyperinflation is something completely different. Hyperinflation no. is the wholesale loss of faith in a currency system. Yeah. It's when the general public says, maybe I'm not un smart enough to understand monetary systems and all that stuff because I'm just a, a poor pauper in Zimbabwe, but I am smart enough to understand my government is corrupt as shit and whatever's going down here, I don't believe my own government's money. I want somebody else's money. Mm -hmm. When that happens, it's, uh, it's the phenomenon of the people of a nation losing faith in their own currency so that people favor just some other currency, some other government's currency. Or well, some other good, or some other good, anything, mm -hmm. anything that's tangible. Well, Gresham's yeah. law, basically. Sometimes they want to buy actual hard assets, but if they're going to keep any money in currency, when they want to put it in some other nation's currency, economists actually call that phenomenon dollarization. Why? Uh -huh. Because the favorite, the favorite currency to switch into is U.S. dollars. Mm. In order to have the whole world have the, you know, the U.S. people say, 
okay, we're losing faith in the U.S. dollar. You know, I'd rather have Canadian dollars instead of U.S. dollars, or I'd rather have euros instead of U.S. dollars. And all of the other people around the world who depend on the U.S. dollar is the central focus of the entire financial system start losing faith in the U.S. dollar, and they want to turn to an alternative. Now, this has already started to happen, at least on a sovereign level. Russia has divested itself almost entirely of its U.S. assets. And it was predictions years ago that China and Russia would both divest their U.S. assets. They're already doing it. These things are already in motion. They're already happening. But, right. you know, the, the sky's not falling. What's, uh, what's the big deal? The thing is that there's no viable alternative yet. If you wanted to say that you're the government of Russia and you can sell your U.S. Treasury bills and buy gold bullion or buy, you know, some other asset, they're sophisticated financial actors. But as far as the average guy on the street saying, I don't trust U.S. dollars anymore, I'd rather have euros. First of all, we're a long way politically from, from that kind of a change in public perception, which is what it takes to get to true hyperinflation. But more importantly, there needs to be an alternative that's better. I, I, instead of my U.S. dollars, I want to have what Canadian dollars, Mexican pesos. Well, wait a minute. There is one, I think, emerging. The Bitcoin maximalists would tell you it's already there. It's Bitcoin. And that's what's going to happen is people are going to lose faith in government fiat. They're all going to run to cryptocurrency instead. That's plausible. And I definitely want to give I want to just acknowledge my own mistakes in this. When I first started making predictions about this, I said, look, the, the problem is that governments are going to see this coming because even governments are not that stupid. Well, I guess I underestimated the stupidity of governments. They don't understand how big <laughs> of a threat cryptocurrency really is to their monopoly on issuing money. Governments have a monopoly on issuing money. Everybody accepts that only the government gets to issue money. Didn't used to work that way. It was private banks that used to issue all the money. Yep. Yep. Now it's the government. Everybody's used to it. Governments aren't going to want to let that up. So I think that, and, and what's fascinating to me, I was surprised Grant Williams didn't take the bait because in the interview you were referring to, at the end, Dr. Lacey Hunt says that the thing that would be really interesting would be a digital currency, a competitor and an alternative for the U.S. dollar that's a digital currency. Now, that would be a whole different thing. And I don't think that, that Dr. Hunt has that technology background, so he doesn't really understand the intricacies. But he was saying, what about that? And Grant and Bill didn't take the bait on that one. I thought that was the most profound point in that entire dollar endgame series, which was terrific that, yeah, yeah. Uh, that Grant and Bill did. And they didn't take the bait when Dr. Lacey Hunt said that. What I would say is exactly what will happen is... The U.S. dollar's hegemony over the global financial system will be replaced by a digital currency. Will it be a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin or, or Ethereum? Or will it be a sovereign digital currency, which could be, you know, Russia and, and uh, China or somebody partnering to build something that's a competitor to try to destabilize the United States? It could be the U.S. government getting its act together and realizing that in order to maintain its hegemony over the global financial system, it needs to assert the super sovereign digital currency, this is the, you know, the Fed dollar, or the, the Fed coin, as some people call it. Um, there's lots of ways that it could go, but I don't see how you ever could get to a U.S. dollar hyperinflation until there is a dollarization mechanism, a, a flight to another currency system. And that other currency system, the only logical way that it makes any sense for me for that ever to happen is it's a digital currency system, which offers significant benefit over conventional fiat paper currency systems. That's going to be true of all of the digital currency systems. They're all better than paper money. The, the Bitcoin one is better in ways that you and I might think are better, but it's not better in terms of the way the government thinks. They, they don't think it's better that, that you, uh, using Bitcoin, can, can make it much more difficult for the government to monitor and oversee and control your financial privacy. Um, governments are going to design their own digital currency systems with the opposite goals of making everything traceable. That's going to be a power struggle. So I think that what happens is, you know, does the dollar eventually fall? Well, if the, the paper dollar is going to fall to a, in favor of a digital currency, if it's a digital dollar from the U.S. Federal Reserve that really they actually got their shit together, which they're a long way from. That could be the way the U.S. saves its monopoly over the global financial system. If they don't do that, whoever has the emergent digital currency system that wins in terms of uh, public opinion, um, that's going to be what the U.S. dollar 
cedes to, and it's a very unknown as to who's going to be in control of it. Well, Eric, what I think can you is, explain why that central bank digital currency is so superior to the to the system that we have right now? Because I think most viewers and listeners would say, well, wait a minute, Eric. I mean, basically right now the dollar is digital. How many people are going around paying with cash? Uh, yeah. You know, not very many people. So why is it that a, that a central bank digital dollar Fed coin is so superior to the system we have well, right now? Well, but let's let's actually make it. Why is digital currency superior, regardless of whether it's a sovereign digital <laughs> currency, a central bank digital currency or a cryptocurrency that's that's like Bitcoin? Right. The answer is, and first of all, people will tell you that the dollar has been digital for 30 years. That's utter nonsense. The dollar has been supported by digital accounting and transfer and payment systems for 30 years. So we have uh, credit cards and we have debit cards and we have so forth. Those things are all creating liabilities. There are inter there, there are dependencies uh, between your when you spend money on on buying a dozen flowers for your girlfriend. Uh, there's now an obligation that's created to where the credit card company has to pay the, the flower vendor and you have to pay the credit card company. And all of these things have counterparty risks associated with them. And those counterparty risks are gamed by big banks who actually uh, turn them into tradable instruments. So they take these various different kinds of counterparty risk and they, they securitize instruments that allow them to trade around and so forth. Um, what you get with secure digital bearer assets, the, the underlying inventions that made digital currency possible, is the idea of, I want to sell a stock to you, George. Well, we do it. There's no broker. There's no middleman. There's no institution in between that has a counterparty risk that could fail. Yeah, we were using some centralized stock exchange for the purpose of agreeing on a price because we're going to go on whatever the rest of the market says the price should be. But once the transaction, the way it works today, if I buy uh, 100 shares of stock and you happen to be the guy, even though I can't see you, I don't know your name, but you're the guy on the other side, you're selling the 100 shares of stock. There's this whole settlement process that the industry is so proud of itself. It used to take five days to settle a, a, a transaction. Then they got to T plus three, which was you know launched with all this big fanfare. It only takes us three days to figure out who bought the stock after you close the transaction by the time all of our systems keep up with it. Well, what you get with instantaneous digital bearer assets is the ability to design a completely different system that says the stock exchange is just for price discovery so that you and I agree on the right price. I sell it from my ownership to your ownership instantaneously. There is no settlement, there is no clearing. All that shit happens instantaneously when the transaction goes down and you own it right then. You don't have to wait three days before you can sell it or, or any of that stuff. The fact that you don't have to wait the three days is not the important benefit. The important benefit is if your broker totally goes MF global overnight and it's completely bankrupt and everything's lost, you didn't lose anything because nothing is held in street name and the broker's name. It's all held in your own account. With respect to all of our financial transactions, when I send, when I write you a check, even if I'm even if it's a wire transfer, there are still all of these counterparty dependencies and all of these potentials for big systematic institutional failures, a Lehman Brothers style thing that could break and take down the whole system. When you go to secure digital bearer assets and the transfer of ownership is instantaneous online and electronic, it is a completely different game than the. Uh, the last 30 years of digital money that people think of as digital money. We're talking about digital bearer assets that actually convey or transmit value through a computer network, as opposed to effectively sending a check through a computer network, which basically just informs somebody of a counterparty obligation that exists someplace else. But it's actually think, transmitting the value.